y'all know me. Hallelujah. God is so good. And God is good all the time. And all the time he is good. He always let us know every day he's good. See a bright and shining light every day. When it get dark at night, you see bright shining light and stars at night, letting you know that he's still here. And then in the morning, he wake you up, you're breathing and walking and carrying on, showing you his love. God is good. He's good all the time. I know you know that, but I just like to brag on church. If it'll make you mad, you that door is open, there it is. I just like to brag on him. Because he did so much for you. I, when I come, I see y'all, I just get so excited and happy because you're still here and you're looking good. And I know God is doing things in your life. So I said, God, you're doing it for them. I know you're me too, God. You're working on me too. But he's good. Father, we thank you today, God, now for your grace, your mercy. Father, we exalt you, we give you praise, we give you glory, and we thank you, Father God, for who you is. And Father God, I am here for you today, that you may have your way in this vessel clay. Speak to it, speak through it, bless your word, and bless your people. Satan, I serve you notice you're not welcome in here. The word of God shall and will have free course today. And Father, with the words of my mouth and the melters in my heart, be acceptable into your sight, O God, my strength and my redeemer. Speak accurately today, Lord God. Speak your truth that your people may be blessed. Show us us today, Lord God. Then help us work on us. Thank you now, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, good morning. <laughs> God is so good. I want to talk about this morning. Do all you can do for the Lord. <laughs> okay, let me say it again. Do all you can do for the Lord. So when you don't do it your best, the rest is live up to him. Let me take this scripture out of the book of 2 Peter before I take off and go to running. Because I feel like I'm going to run today. Don't think it's strange when I go to running because I, I do stuff like that. Um, that's a crazy preacher. Spiritual wise, you know, not crazy, crazy, you know, but the uh, first chapter of Second Peter. The third verse, when you get this, say amen. Okay, still some pages running. Second Peter, the first chapter, verse three. According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that had called us to glory and virtue. Let me read the amplified part. For his divine power had bestowed on us absolutely everything necessary for a uh, dynamite, mm, praise the Lord, spiritual life and godliness through truth and personal knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellent. You know, I was, I was looking through 
just going through my phone yesterday, and I saw Michael Jordan on there. They were doing a celebration to COVID, the, the COVID, the guy who got crashed in the plane, died in the helicopter, COVID, yeah. He was talking about how he was and how he called him <laughs> 2 o'clock in the morning. He said he had got upset, but all of a sudden he just calmed down and wouldn't listen to the boy. The boy was looking for something. He wanted, he wanted what he had to make himself better. And this is what he said stuck with me. He said, Kobe emptied his tank and left it on the floor. So what he said, he didn't take nothing with him. Church, I come to tell you to do all you can do for the Lord. Don't take nothing with you. There's some singers in here can sing but don't want to sing. There's some singers in here singing from their heart, giving God the glory. Amen. Do all you can do for the Lord. Amen. Because he has given us everything, everything pertaining to life and godliness. He had gave us his son. He had gave up the Holy Ghost. He has set up salvation through his son. He gave up the written word of God. It ain't nothing that we can't have to do what God called us to do. That's why I said, God, use me to your glory. I'm here for you today. Let me slow down for a few moments. Listen. <clears throat> Whatever God called you to do <clears throat> with the grace which he had given you, do it with all your heart. See, whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord. Amen. See, it ain't about you. It ain't about me. You ain't doing it for me. I ain't doing it for you. I'm doing it for God's glory. Hallelujah. Because he give me an assignment. I'm going to do everything I can to preach and to teach like it's my last day on earth. Hallelujah. Because I don't want God to say, son, what did you do with that I gave you? I can't say, I didn't know how. He said, you didn't know how, but let me just look at the book. And I saw all the stuff that was available for you to do this year. Don't tell me you can't do it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen, <clears throat> he's all things pertaining to life. God had called us to glory and virtue. And we know that virtue is moral excellence. See, see, God wants us to be just like him. Oh, Lord, him, just like him, excellent, just like him. See, everything God do, it is good. I know we're going to do some stuff and mess up. But one thing about it, we got a God that can fix the mess. Can fix that before we mess up. All we got to do is fess up, keep getting up, and going on. We're going to mess up. See, ain't no sense we saying that I can't do this yet. I don't know how to do it. He tells us over in the book of Philippians uh, 4 and 13, we can do all things through Christ who is strengthened us. He gives us the grace because he is the God of all grace. It don't matter what type of level that you own, you got the grace to work that level. And another thing God gave us, when we first got saved, God gave us a mess of faith. In other words, he jump-started us. God help me, sir. You, you, you know, how many know them old cars that went out of gas? Hey, Amen. And, and, and then you had to go get some gas and it won't crank. It keep popping. But when you're posting gas in the carburetor, cut back out. Pour some more in there. You keep paying. God give us the great to jumpstart us. Hallelujah. Ain't no sense to saying, I can't do this here. This is out of my field. Ain't nothing out of your field when God gives the grace right where you at. I'm a living witness. You know, I was sharing with some people this morning. I was, I was saying, uh, I just wonder when I was coming up in God, why God chose me to be a pastor, to be a preacher without education. And he began to let me know, say, so in other words, I give you people that are knowledgeable. So in other words, where you weak at, they're strong. And where they're weak at, you strong. So in other words, it's a team working together. Ain't 
ain't nothing God can't do. I consider myself as a modern day Moses. I'm talking, I come to deliver the children of Israel out of bondage. If you're in bondage, I can bring you out through the Holy Ghost. Let me slow down. Listen. <clears throat> the love of our Heavenly Father, salvation through Jesus Christ, He gives us salvation through Jesus Christ. See, salvation, salvation is like a, I can use it like an onion. Hallelujah. Salvation is strong. And each layer you pull back is more in there. But I encourage you before you go to the second level, second layer, get everything out of the first level. Oh, God. See, in the first level is salvation, which means born again to be regenerated, to be transformed. If you don't understand the, level, the first level of salvation, praise the Lord, and want to go to the next level, you are left something that's going to help you to walk in the next level. Oh, God. So we got to get everything out of that. He said, Christ, intercede. He's our intercessor up there in heaven. He intercedes for you and I, even though sometimes I might preach and I might say the wrong thing. Father, this, this is what he meant. He didn't, say it, he didn't say it that way. He said it another way, but I knew exactly his heart looked like that what he wanted to say. That's what he meant, Father. God. He, I'm talking, we got salvation, and we got an innocence right to intercede for us. Oh, God. And then, then again, we got some better. We got the indwelling of the Holy Ghost. The teacher that died on the inside, sitting at the table, you on one side, teaching you, teaching you about what you had tapped into, teaching you about your new life and the thing that you don't understand, the thing giving you understanding of the word of God. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. Say it with me, the Holy Ghost. Say it like it means, the Holy Ghost. The teacher. Hallelujah. Then baptism in the Holy Ghost. Amen. He baptized you into, hallelujah, into the body of Christ. Hallelujah. Then he baptized you in the water. Amen. For the, it's an outward showing of an inward conversion. And then he baptized you in the Holy Ghost. The cup of, The Holy Ghost with the evidence speaking in tongues. You supposed to be speaking in tongues because you got the Holy Ghost. Only inside I can see the word that coming over in your belly, but you don't want to play with him. You scared of him. Don't be scared of you. Woo! They're deep there, yeah, better give me credit for. Don't be scared of you because on the inside, you in him. He in you, you in him. He's not going to let you say the wrong thing. One thing about it, if you make the wrong step, don't you know he's a teacher? Do you know the teacher will give you the insight? It was this boy on, on, on this, I watch this, like I told you, I go through things looking for stuff. It was this boy, he was special. Down syndrome. His actor was singing this song. He says, show me my heart, Lord. Show me my heart. There's a song he was singing. Show me my heart, Lord, that I may look through my heart. I heard as a law, him as if that little fella right there don't have all the paraphernalia that I have, the material that I have. And he's singing like that. What can I do with all I have? All right. All right. Who law him much? See, I, I don't want God to be mad at me or upset at me. And I don't want him to be upset at you. Because you're going to get exactly what he gave me to give you. Now, don't feel bad if I step on your toes. <sighs> Let me tell you something. It's step on mine first. My told me stepped all over first. So you think I'm going to let sit back and just not step on your toes and my been ran over? 
Your toes ain't no better than mine. Do all you can do for the Lord. Okay. Then it says, communion with the saints. And the inspiration of the words is sufficient to make all that believer need for life and godliness. See, the inspired word, the word that God inspired means to write. In other words, the word that God gave them insight to write. And then give them interpretation of that to write it. Not only just for themselves, for you and I. Because God looked down through time and saw you. God looked down through time and saw me. Before he created the world, he knew what I was going to become. He knew what you were going to become. Because he set us up. Oh, God, help mercy. A God that sets you up. Not to set you up to cause you to fall. Set you up to bless you. Y'all, I'm telling you something right now. This has been a setup. God set you up to bless you. Hallelujah. He didn't set you up to destroy you. He set you up to bless you. Who oh, God. In the book of 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17, all scriptures given by inspiration of God and if profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, Thoroughly, I wrote that down twice. Thoroughly, thoroughly fashioned unto all good work. Don't, don't tell me God didn't set you up. It ain't nothing that, that's in our life that we can't get corrected by. The word of God is doctrine. Hallelujah. It's good for correction, instruction in righteousness that you may fashion. Be fashioned unto all good work. But you know what? God didn't stop there. One of the reasons God said this because we are his workmanship. Creating Christ Jesus unto good work. Which God had before our day that we should walk in me. This is Ephesians 2 and 10. A God that's fixed this thing up. A God that knows that we in this human body didn't know how to walk this walk. But he set it up that you and I can have a road map. The word of God is a road map. So when you have the Holy Ghost on the inside, I call him a GPS. God plan for salvation. Then I got that road map for him, the word of God. It would direct me the way I go. Do I always hit the point? No, I mess up sometimes. But God know by the Holy Ghost, I mess up. He's a son, this ain't the right way. Do it this way. What do I do? I do it that way. Let me go somewhere. Let's go to Ephesians. I just read that, but I'm going to read the Amplified part. I told you the word of God is your roadmap. Hallelujah. Look what it says, Ephesians 2 and 10, Amplified. For we are its workmanship. His own hand work, a work of art created in Christ Jesus, reborn from above, spiritual transformed, renewed, 
ready to be used for good works, which God, which God prepared for us beforehand, before time. Taking part which he set so that we will walk in them living the good life which he pre uh, prearranged, oh God, and made ready for us. God prearranged life for us. He knew Adam messed it up. So God had to flip the switch. He sent another Adam. Jesus Christ was born from above and set this thing right. There ain't no sense that we can't, I can't do this here. If you're saying I can't do this here, it's because you don't want to do it. If you say I can't sing, it's because you don't want to do it. I know I can't, I know I can't care a tune, but I make a joyful noise. It might not sound good to you. It's coming from a heart. But God received that because God knows where it's coming from. Oh, hallelujah. Do all you can do for the Lord in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Then Paul said in Philippians 4, 1 and 6 in the Holy Ghost, being confident mm, 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 of the very thing he which had begun a good work in you will perform it <coughs> until the day of Jesus Christ. So God had already, already set things up. The scripture said we are living in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. You are already up there. You're striving to be connected with what you got up there. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, how are we going to do it, Pastor? I'm glad you asked me. God is going to work it out. Because we are his workmanship. In other words, God is the car designer. Thank you, Holy Ghost. God is like a big factory. And the factory is God. He got all the angels assigned to do certain work there. Yeah. And he got them signed up. They got different numbers. And when they call that number, they come to assist you. Lord help me. Say. They come to help you because they have an assignment to watch over your life, to help you in all your ways. God is our workmanship, creating Christ Jesus to good work. And then it tells me, I'll just quote this, but I'm going to go back and quote it again. Philippians 2 and, no, I ain't quote this one. Philippians 2 and 13. For it's God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. See, it's God. They're working in you. You might be going somewhere to do something wrong or say something wrong, all of a sudden something else speak to you. Oh God, how much? Holy Ghost speak to you on one side while the other side is speaking to something that leads you wrong. But one thing about it, the Holy Ghost is so strong, he will override that thought that's trying to get you to do wrong. If you his child. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And something else, if you're not his child. If it's something that he want to be done, would want to be done, and you right there in the way for him to get it done, he will use you to get it done. God will change the hearts. If he can change the heart of a king, if he can change the heart of Pharaoh. What do you think he'd do to the other person? He had to deal with Pharaoh for a little while, but he finally changed it. 
Then Pharaoh realized who it was, but it was too late. <laughs> Don't wait too late to realize who God is. Hallelujah. In Philippians, in Philippians 4 and 13, we just talked about this scripture here. I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Now, now we can look at that word strengthen could be a uh, dudamut power. Holy Ghost got so much power, y'all. Do you not know the reason he don't ignite all this power in you? Because we won't be able to handle it. The more you grow, the more he'll give you. But what you got right now is for what you, for you, what you get right now. You got that for what, right where you are. To do everything you need to do right there where you are. If you're a teacher, you got enough anointing to teach. If you're a preacher, a pastor, a deacon, a lay maker, a lay maker, whatever, you have the power to do that. If you're just a child of God, just a witness, you got the power to do that. Yes, you got the power to do that. Hallelujah. The devil is a lie. You ever got people running around, I can't, I, I don't know how to do this here. I, I, I ain't got the power. I'm not highly educated. What educated got to do when it comes to God? <laughs> Nothing. God will educate the educator to let him know he ain't educated. Y'all better hear me today. Do all you can do for the Lord. Don't hold back. If you hold back, you might be holding somebody a spot. If you hold back, you might have a word for somebody at a certain location, but you ain't there because you're out of place. But if you're in the right place for that person, you might say, well, I'm here, but I don't know who it's going to be. That's all right. Just be at the right place. And when that person show up, God going to say, yeah, that's him. You think I'm lying? Ask Samuel. When Samuel went down the Jesse house to anoint some guys for king, one man. All those handsome guys came before Sam, I mean, uh, before uh, 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 Samuel. The Lord said, that ain't none of him. Hallelujah. So Samuel went back and asked Jesse, do you have any more? He said, I have a little red boy, a little ruder looking boy. I didn't feel keep my sheep. Hallelujah. God said, go and get him. It made me think about a little boy yeah. running around Alvin a long time ago growing up. But God had his eyes on him. Yeah. But I wasn't even thinking about God. <laughs> hey, glory. But God didn't take his eyes off the little boy. Yeah. After a while, by and by, yeah. God got that little boy. That morning, God put in a little boy heart to go to the church. This is what I'm talking about. He's a grown man. He's a grown man. I call him a little boy because in the eyes of God, he's just a boy. But the boy came to church on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> Hallelujah. That little boy was sitting over the brush break that spot hot, sitting over where you was. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> The man was preaching in my father's house. And at the end, he gave the benediction. I came up, the little boy came up and gave his life to God. And God is saying, that's him. And so when, when Samuel went and got David, the Lord told Samson, not Samson, but 
uh, 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 Samuel, does him anoint him. So he poured oil over his head and anointed him to be king over Israel. Now look, they already had a king. They had Saul. But Saul disobeyed God. But God raised David up to be a, a mighty warrior king over Israel. Thank you, Lord God. He raised him up. Who anoint him, he went there to be with Saul. And Saul, no, this will happen. An evil spirit came on Saul. Because Saul had did not obey God. He told him, go out and kill the all the, those are uh, Amorite, I think the name of it. Kill all of them. The king, the dog, the cat, the baby, everything. Even the skunk, I'm putting that in there. Kill them all. But Saul, he saw the best of things. He kept it and kept the king alive and brought him back. And that was disobedient to God. And God was getting ready to take Saul off the throne. How many know, whew, even though he was anointed, but he wasn't a king no more. Even though he was walking in that office, but he wasn't a king no more. Because God took his kingship from him. And then an evil spirit came upon him. You hear me? Mm-hmm. Lord, him was Jesus. An uh, evil spirit came on him. And then one of the guys, I think it might be, might be the son, Jonathan, uh, Samuel got a son down there that can play skillful. So I was to go get him. And David came, he played his harp. The evil spirit left. How many know singing? Will drive away evil spirits. You think I'm lying. Sometimes you might be at home. You might be feeling bad. You might be depressed. But you go to singing them hymns. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy, Jesus. I guarantee you, that's what on you. It got to leave. See, miserable can't stay with praise. It. If you feel depressed, depressed can't stay with worship at. Oh, I dare you to start singing the way you know how to sing. Lord, in my shepherd, I shall not want. I guarantee you, depressed will leave. When you put in a garment of praise, it got to go. Some of you, some of you in here is a worship leader, but don't want to do it. Because you think you can't do it. God said you can do all things through Christ with strengthening you. Okay, let me go and finish up now. Praise the Lord. Y'all been blessed so far? Y'all ain't, I am. <clears throat> How many know that, that we are being changed from glory to glory? It's like in a glass. When you look into the mirror, you can look at yourself and say, wow, it's something different about me. I don't look like I used to look before I came to him. Before I came to him, I was looking dull and puny looking, all that different type of stuff because I had so much stuff invested on the inside of me. I even had drinking spirit and still was in there hanging around. Drug spirit, smoking the cigarette, smoking spirit, all that hanging around in me. But when I gave it up and came to him, things changed. Oh, oh God, I'm say. Okay, let's go back to that scripture. The same scripture over there, uh, I mean, uh, Second Peter 1. I'm going to start reading it. I'm going to start reading verse 4. King, King, King James Version. I don't read, I don't very read verse one. It said, whereby are given unto us exceedingly 
great and precious promise that by these ye might be partaken of, of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. Peter is getting all his readers to read what he's saying that they can be blessed and grow to maturity. Now he's telling them some clothes to put on. In verse 5, he said, And besides this, give all diligently. Mm. Look at the word diligently. It's like a persistent word. I'm not going to stop. I'm going to keep pressing forward. I'm not going to let it stop me. I'm going to work hard what I have to do. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amplify said, for this very reason, applying your, your diligently to the divine promise, making every effort and exercising your faith to develop more excellent. Lord, how much is Jesus? More excellent. In more excellent knowledge and insight and understanding. So all this should let, see, see all this letting us know that we can put on all this stuff right here. All we got to do is put it on practice and exercise. I got moral excellence, which means I got virtue. I'm walking in God's glory because he called me to glory and virtue. In other words, I'm walking in God's glory because he's training me for a place where all the glory is. I'm walking in God excellent, because that's the word virtue means excellent, more excellent. I'm walking in God excellent because up there is excellent. I'm being trained. We're being trained down here how to walk in this stuff. Amen. Don't be scared of walking excellent. Let them say, you think y'all to tell me, yes, I'm all that in God. Yes, in him. You think you're perfect? Yes, I'm perfect in God. Shut the devil's mouth up. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. This section, Peter urged his reader to grow to spiritual maturity. Add to your faith, indicate area of growth that follow after salvation. Virtue is more, ex more excellent, like I just said, praise the Lord. And then excellent. Knowledge is spiritual truth. Knowledge is spiritual truth. See, we get the knowledge after him that created us from the dust of the earth. And then blew himself in us. Mm, Lord, him mushroom. And then it's a temperance. It's self control. Uh oh. See, don't never say you can't control your temple. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. That's why it's a self control. The wound on the inside helps you control your temple, it helps you to control how to say things. Not just say what comes to your mind. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it. I'm just, I, 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 just, I just got to say it. Ain't <laughs> you heard them folks? I, I, I just got to say it, y'all. I'm sorry. A lot of people, they see me and say, there's a sign of, excuse me what they say, they're going on course. I said, man, it ain't me you got to hide from. It's him. <laughs> I'm just about finished, y'all. Praise the Lord. And then patience is endurance. Lord, how much? See, see, patience is, 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 is like tolerating stuff. Putting up with things. Putting up with folks. Endurance. It means that I'm going to do this I'm to the end. I'm going to keep on working on me. I'm going to be persistent. 
and I'm not going to stop, then what do you got to do? You got to talk to yourself. Some, how many of you got to talk to yourself? You got to tell yourself, you got to tell yourself who, who is in control. And he said, godliness, godliness is God's likeness. Godliness is God's likeness. See, God wants to be just like him. And the only way to learn how to be like him, watch, look at Jesus, his son. Look at him and how he cared for himself, how he was compassionate to people, how he loved people, how he put it with people, how he was patient with people, how he was merciful with people. How he will long suffer with people. Everything we do in the earth is being jotted down in heaven. Everything. Even our thoughts, even our words will come out of my mouth, our mouth being jotted down. Every word I say today is being recorded up in heaven. That's why I'll be so careful about what I say to you. And a lot of times I give, I'll be so nervous. You mean tell you been there a long time before? Yes, I do. Because I want to make sure I said the right thing to you. Because your soul right now is in my hand. Praise the Lord. Okay. Brother kindness is brother love. And charity is nothing but love that reaches beyond yon. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, God, this process. It's a long, a lo- lifelong cycle of spiritual growth for all believers. I know I didn't read all, but there's a lot in there. For the sake of time, I'm going to stop it right here. There's so much in there. But I encourage you to take this, take these notes on the scripture and read it and allow the Holy Ghost to talk more through this year. Back to this again. Do all you can do for the Lord. 